Hi everyone and welcome back to the Paul's Kitchen. Today I am going to be showing all of you how to make applesauce. So let's get started. All right, so let's see what we have going on here. I already did some prep work and so in here I have four Granny Smith apples and I also have one half cup of water. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my burner on high and I'm going to put a lid on top of my saucepan. Now one thing that I want to note is this recipe is really easy to double or triple or whatever you want to do depending on the amount of apples you have. I don't know if you can do more than four apples in a medium saucepan so just keep that in mind if you are wanting to use more apples if you decide to do this. So what I'm doing right now is I am waiting for the water to start boiling. While we're waiting on that though I'm going to just show um, what my initial steps were that I did in the um, prior to making the video. So uh, first here I used a peeler in order to peel the apples so that they don't have a peel or minimal peel. As you can see, there's a little bit of peel there. Now, one thing I want to say is the peel contains a lot of the fiber in apples. So that's something to keep in mind that when you make applesauce and you take the peel off, then you're losing a lot of that fiber content. So just something to keep in mind. Then what I did was after I peeled the apple, was I took my cutter here in order to core the apple so then I get this nice shape here. Now what you can do instead is let's say let me grab another apple. Okay so what you could do is you peel the apple and then you could just take your knife and cut around the core um, but having tools like this is nice too. Then after that what I did was I cut these into smaller pieces. So I'm going to just do that right now so I can get these last little bits of apple into our saucepan. So let's put that in here. And so now we wait in order for our um, water to heat up to where we need it to be. So again, it, we're going to be looking for the water to start boiling. One thing with making applesauce is you want to make sure that there's always at least a little bit of water at the bottom of the pan. Uh, this way the apples don't burn or scorch. Um, so with this recipe, that means you're going to have to keep an eye on the um, apples that you're cooking in order to ensure that you don't have burnt applesauce as your end product. It sounds like it sounds like we're getting close. So you don't have to necessarily eyeball it when you're doing stuff like this. You can use your ear to listen, to listen and hear when the water's starting to cook up more. That's going to be helpful when let's say you are doing another recipe that maybe involves a saucepan, uh, but then you're working on something else. Um, so while you're working on that other thing, once you hear your water boiling, then you know, okay, I need to return back to my saucepan or my pan or my pot and take care of that. And then I can go back to whatever I was working on. There's little tricks like that that are going to help when it comes to your time management and preparation in the kitchen. All right, so that is definitely where we need it to be. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this now down to medium low. So on mine, I'm going to turn it down to three. Then I'm going to set my um, timer to 10 minutes. Again, with this, I'm going to want to make sure that, um, there we go. I'm going to want to make sure that there's still enough water at the bottom of the pan. And I'm also going to want to make sure that I have uh, maybe like a spoon, a wooden spoon on hand in order to occasionally stir this. So this is going to be cooking for the next 10 minutes and I will um, show what happens then next once this 10 minutes is finished. All right, so 10 minutes has gone by. We are going to take off our lid. Good news is we still have plenty of liquid in our pan, so I'm not concerned about adding more liquid. However, if you see that there's not enough liquid in your pan, 
definitely make sure that you add a little bit more water. Now what I'm gonna do is I have one half teaspoon here of cinnamon, so I'm gonna add that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of nutmeg, just literally gonna do a dash like that. And then I'm going to take my spoon here and mix in that cinnamon and nutmeg. All right, and then I'm literally just gonna repeat what uh, I just did and then I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna keep it at medium low and I'm going to set it again for 10 minutes and then periodically I will make sure to check in and to stir the applesauce a little more um, so that it's not being burnt at the bottom of the pan. I ended up turning off the stove top a little early just because if we take a look, the applesauce pretty much looks done. Um, so I'm happy about that. I'm happy with the fact that it didn't take quite as long as I thought it would. Uh, it normally takes a little longer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the potato masher and just mash it up a little bit more um, just for a slightly smoother texture. Although I do like a little bit of chunk. And that's literally it. Um, you are able to eat it either hot, except it's way too hot right now, so I'm gonna give it a few uh, minutes before I try it. Um, or otherwise, you can let it cool off on the stove top for a little bit, then put it in the fridge, and then you can enjoy it cold as well. So as we can see, applesauce is really easy to make, and I, you might have picked up on the fact that I didn't use any sugar. Um, now, if you're wanting to make this as more of a dessert, then go ahead and add a little bit of brown sugar. But if you're looking for a healthy snack, then all you need literally is just the apples, the water, cinnamon, and a dash of nutmeg. Um, so that is how we make applesauce. Enjoy.